and welcome to Making Music. My name is Jack Van Breen from Guitar Showcase, sponsors this weekly show. And with me today, I have Mr. Jeff McDonald from Harmon Pro. And we're going to talk about modern sound systems and how much easier they've made our lives as traveling musicians. Well, we hope so. Yes. Jeff, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be a guest on Making Music. Oh, great. Uh, speaking of modern sound systems, we did have that shot that uh, we wanted to kind of kick the show off. Emerson was going to bring up a... what an old, typical sound system used to be. Um, back in the day, if you remember, you know, doing doing gigs, you've been doing gigs long enough. You've been making music your whole life, essentially. Pretty much. Um, I've been making music as not so much a musician, but on the other end, as a sound guy. So, uh, lugging the amplifiers around, hooking up all the equipment, night by night yeah. by night. Here's a, a, a new modern sound system installed into a into a concert venue. I believe this was. Uh, a JBL Harman Professional sound system for uh, Eric Clapton, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so. that's pretty impressive. Now, yeah. we're not going to talk about that today. I don't <laughs> think that's what the, 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 the viewers of this show really are, are up for, but we can talk about what is, what is new and what's exciting and what a modern sound system is comprised of, I guess. Okay, so. well, let's, let's kind of talk about that. Let's talk mm -hmm. about what parts go into making a good sound system that travels well. Sure. Um, Really, it's, it's a couple of basic things. You've got your inputs that come in, so uh, your, your uh, instruments that are mic'd up, the drum set, the guitars, the keyboards, everything like that, all go into a mixer. So, so this, we go from a microphone here. into a mixer, uh, and when you go into the mixer, that's where you can adjust individual levels of things, uh, make some, some changes to the sound in both volume and tone. Um, so we've got our tone controls here, are different mix buses mm -hmm. for special effects and monitor sims mm -hmm. so the musicians can hear themselves? Yep. And, and then overall game. level control. And then from there, uh, the next step, we'll go into detail on these individually, but the next step is you go out of there. What a traditional sound system was, you would leave this audio mixer and you would go into a rack of multiple units. You would have uh, equalizers, you would have crossovers, you would have limiters, you would have delays, and it ended up being usually a large rack full of gear that was kind of tough to lug around. Well, about as tall as you are. Yeah, about as tall as me. And nowadays, what they go into is, if you look at the way that modern sound systems are, a big change is the change in digital sound systems, the yes. digital signal processing, you could say. So we go into a piece uh, that, if you can notice here, is just a single rack space piece now, and uh, that has all of our needs in it. It's got the crossover, the equalization, and we'll talk about some advanced features that digital signal processing gives you. Uh, we just go right down next from this, from this piece here. We're going to go out of the, the signal processor into an amplifier. Amplifier simply makes, makes things louder <laughs> and hopefully does it well. Um, and there's a lot of changes that have happened lately in amplification, which we can talk about. And then the last thing that you do out of the amplifier, put it into a loudspeaker. So we'll go into, we've got a little uh, speaker system set up here today, which has a, a high frequency or a mid high frequency speaker here. And then below it's sitting on top of a subwoofer. So yeah. um, fairly typical for most bands. I know my band travels with a subwoofer mid high frequency system. Uh, a lot of bands do that. It's very portable and still sounds pretty good. Yeah, and the portable nature of things is another thing we want to make sure and address today because you're lugging it around from show to show, gig yeah. to gig. And I'm not the spring chicken I used to be <laughs> when I could carry a pair of JBL 4550s by that's, myself. That's right, that's right. Very few of us are anymore. <laughs> so, um, so let's start at the input side. Okay. I think would be a good place to start. Um, usually when you're getting your band ready to go, you've got your band, you're rehearsing, you're ready to go out on a gig, you need microphones. That's where everything starts. And usually, uh, we've got some microphones set out on the table here. Uh, usually, there's a dedicated microphone to similar instruments. This microphone over here, for instance, is uh, set up specifically for uh, a kick drum, which is the bass drum of the drum kit. Um, it actually has a separate uh, style and feature set that complements the kick drum, if you will. Um, then there's a, a number of different uh, microphones that you can use for um, uh, miking up your uh, toms and your cymbals, yeah, and your snare drum and everything. Um, this is a, a nice uh, condenser mic here from. These are all AKG mics that we're talking about. AKG is part of the Harman Pro Group. 
Um, this is uh, an AKG C414. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people are familiar with this microphone. It's been around for a long time. Well, a lot of our viewers are familiar with this because that's our microphone of choice. We do a lot of uh, acoustic music shows, mm -hmm. and generally we'll put that puppy right about here in the center of the stage, sit around and play. Yeah. And it works very well for that application as well as some of the others you're about to talk about. Yeah, recording and live, it's been a, a workhorse for us over the years. It's, it's a great microphone. Um, in the live environment, it's used uh, a lot of times uh, for picking up acoustic instruments. Um, a real common application is for a drum set. You're gonna use these to what we call overhead, which is to mic the overall drum kit. You'll notice in a, in, a, um, in a live concert video of anything, you'll see a couple of microphones up on top of the drum set. And that's typically what these 414s are gonna be used for the most. Um, and that helps capture the sound better. Um, also, the other thing that's, that's really important, no matter what size uh, gig you're doing, you gotta mic the vocals. Absolutely. Um, AKG's got, has actually just recently launched a couple of uh, new microphones uh, for vocal reinforcement. Um, they, they're the AKG D5 and C5. Uh, D is, simply stands for dynamic microphone and the C stands for a condenser microphone. Um, and uh, that's probably a whole, we could spend a whole show just talking about <laughs> microphones. Absolutely. Uh, but essentially, um, uh, it's a different choice. The best thing that you do when you're picking out a vocal mic is to go in, talk to a pro audio, uh, resale, re retailer like, like showcase, showcase and um, take a listen to them. The one thing that I always recommend is you got to you got to talk into them. You got to make sure and sing into them. See how they sound to you. Uh, mics are somewhat, you know, by choice. People say, oh, I, I have to use that mic because it's what sounds good for me or or whatever yes. the case may be. So. Um, so that's basically the microphones. Now, there's a slew of different microphones out there. Uh, we could like I said, we could spend a whole show talking about it. And we have. We've actually done two shows on micing instruments and vocals. So yes, our viewers have seen some of that. That's great. Yeah. That's perfect. So after we capture the, the voice, we're going to send it on over to a mixer. Uh, once again, the mixer um, is uh, somewhat the central part, if you will, of the sound system. Uh, you've got this mixer that we have right here has eight different channels on it for the microphone inputs. Um, this is a, a Soundcraft mixer, part of the Harman Pro group here. Each channel on a mixer, no matter what the size, has similar qualities to it. They all have an input gain, which is usually found at the top of the mixer. They all have some sort of equalization on them, which just gives you uh, added or subtracted high and low frequency. Um, this one offers a nice feature on the mid frequency. It actually has what we call a parametric filter on it, where you can cut or boost the frequency, but then using another knob, you can actually select which frequency you want to. And I found that extremely boost. useful for sometimes the microphone has too much boom in it, it makes the vocals muddy, mm -hmm. or in the case of a lot of female vocalists, there's not enough of that low warmth and they sound kind of shrill, so you can boost that particular range that sounds good. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, uh, and, and the larger format mixers, obviously more equalization that you have and so on and so forth. Um, the other section that most uh, standard mixers will have is uh, an, a, an additional output section, which they call auxiliaries or aux outs is what we commonly refer to them as. Um, and this is something that you can just take each individual channel and dial up its respective aux bus and you can send it out to the monitors, for instance, so that you yep. can hear yourself sing. Um, you can send it to an effects processor, which is another really common uh, part. This uh, box here is a lexicon effects processor, um, and that has gets you your vocal reverb, uh, it gets you a delay, uh, maybe some of the instrumentation, you've got that great acoustic guitar, and you just wanna make it sound like it's uh, a little richer, a little fuller, you can add effects to it. Uh, yeah. chorusing, reverb, delay, all that kind of stuff. And uh, Lexicon's got a nice uh, a piece here that really fits that mold. It's a, uh, a stereo um, dual reverb effects processor. Yeah, and I, I like this piece. Um, now, this one, isn't it two complete engines? So you have the opportunity yeah, of that's separate? Yeah, same family. The MX400 is, is actually basically two MX200s put together. So Excellent. in a single rack space, this once again, this is a modern approach to sound systems. In a single rack space, you can have uh, four different inputs and outputs for reverb, delay, chorus. 
and and back back in the day that was a whole nother rack as tall as I am. Full yes, of, and, uh, and I like to comment about that because when I first started doing pro audio and I've been selling JBL systems for okay 35 years yeah. now uh, and to the first digital delays that we got a luck uh, even tied and it was $1,500 in 1975 which is now like four thousand dollars right and you got one effect that's right and it took you ten minutes to dial it in and a box like this has a street price of a couple uh, hundred bucks couple hundred bucks and you've yeah. got a whole wall of sound that you can preset and yep. store and a touch of a button bring back that's right all those great sounds and for the for the uh, portable musician for the for the people that are taking their rig out to a different venue all the time you need to you need to have it you know run faster and jump higher if you yep. will it's, it's a term that we use a lot um, and this runs faster and jumps higher you've got great sounding reverbs you've got you know world class some would argue sounding reverbs in a box that's a couple hundred bucks and you know fits in a rack space and and, and lexicon again is one of those iconic names they came up with one of the uh, premier digital studio reverbs mm -hmm. back in the day again thousands of dollars and they've just leveraged that R&D into a box couple hundred bucks. Yeah, there's a there's <laughs> a pretty amazing. couple of boxes that are, you know, still sell for 15, 20,000 dollars that Lexicon makes and every record that you hear, every professional record out there has a Lexicon reverb somewhere in it, whether yeah. it's on the drums or the vocals or the acoustic instrumentation or whatever. So I was, it is a legendary I just name. was reading a book on the Mixing Engineers Handbook and they interviewed the top 30 engineers at the time of publication. And yeah, they, they all have their boxes of tricks and they'll have several racks like, racks like this that they'll bring to their studio and there's always a Lexicon in there. Yeah. There's a couple of others, but there's always the Lexicon. So yeah. Yeah, good stuff great. and now affordable. Yeah, and it's, and it's great. It's, it's affordable to the masses, which is which is perfect. Can't yeah. ask for anything more than that. So um, once again, getting back to the mixer, that's one of the things that you can use that for. Um, the mixers uh, can offer you a number of different options. This is this is a, a very much a garden variety mixer. A typical portable band would be carrying this mixer with them. Um, the uh, uh, the larger you go, the more, obviously the more channels that you get. Um, you get subgroups so that you can take all the drums and put them on one fader to yeah. control them. Uh, and you can, you know, do insert dynamics and, and all kinds of stuff on there as well. So the mixer thing is, you know, boy, everywhere from a couple hundred dollars up to a hundred thousand dollars and everywhere in between. So you want to find something that really works for you. What's my band really going to do? How am I going to use this mixer to help make music? Yeah, and one, so, of, the, one of the things that I've found over the years is when you, like you're doing the typical, you're going to play at the corner, bar or you're going to play a little backyard party and you go well I've got three vocalists I uh, like the kick drum eight channels might do it but if you have any future in the band I always recommend jumping to the next level if you think eight will do probably get 12 because you'll find I've always found if I had one more channel yeah I did a reunion gig for my old band first time in 35 years we played together we had a 24 channel board and we were short four inputs yeah yeah, it's it, it's typically the case, and you don't want to run out at that that one gig. That's a that's a great gig. You get to play at a great venue, and you want to make sure and mic everything up so it sounds good. So now we do offer a solution at Guitar Showcase, and a lot of stores across the country do this, where you do have a rental department. So yep. you have the eight channel for the small, and we do have twenty four and thirty two channel boards available for rental for those occasional gigs. Really good point. And when it comes to doing this and making the investment in a, a sound system. You, you should get the opportunity to rent what you can. Take a look, see how you like it, you know, use it for a couple gigs. I know a lot of places will apply some of that to purchase price we down do the road too, which, which is perfect for, for, the, you know, for the band that's starting well, out. Well, for the so. working musician, it, you know, times are tough. Uh, musicians are being paid the same they were 30 years ago when I started, which yep. is kind of sad because yeah. God knows gas isn't the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we've talked about the auxiliary buses and the mixers. And right. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the post-processing? Sure. What will happen um, typically after that is we'll leave the mixer. We've got all of our inputs have come in. We've got all our dedicated mics for all the instruments. Those are all coming into the mixer. We've got the reverb. We've got the effects, you know, pretty much dialed where we want them. We know that we're sending out. Now we need to leave out of that console and go to something else. The next step is the processor. Now, in the past, 
we talked about that big, large rack of equipment. In fact, there was a, a picture that we had, had found uh, of an old, old equipment rack that maybe they can bring up. Uh, Emerson might have that. Um, and it used to be literally racks and racks and racks of equipment. You would have um, dedicated crossovers and equalizers, both graphic and parametric EQs. Uh, you'd have limiters. Uh, you would have um, oh, there's that delays. Yes. Yeah, so you can see there that guy's got that guy's got to lift a lot of gear to get to the next gig. Yeah, and uh, and this picture actually isn't too terribly old uh, in in the big scheme of things. What's amazing now is that we've brought all that down into using digital technology into a little single racks box, single rack space box. This is from DBX Professional, and it's a, it's a drive rack PA which is part of their drive rack series. Real simple, it's got two inputs and six outputs. Uh, in this case, we're not running anything stereo today, we're keeping it simple. So we're going into a single input and we're going out to two different speakers, both a sub and a mid-high box. Yeah. Um, inside that processor, we've got equalization so that we can EQ the input signal coming in. We've also got equalization on the output side so that we can EQ, we can put an EQ in there that matches this JBL SRX715 speaker, for instance. For optimum frequency response. Yep, get that frequency response flat, keeps, uh, keeps the reproduction of sound nice and clean. And controls Re feedback and Reduces feedback dramatically, mud. that's exactly right. So there's equalization, there's also crossover in there. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the crossover, what that does is it's simply a frequency dividing algorithm that takes the low frequency, puts it in the sub, which was way down here way behind down me. Here. You can't yeah. really get a good shot of that, but that's okay. And it takes, trust us, it's there. Uh, and then it takes the high frequency and sends it to the high frequency loudspeaker. So all we've done here is we're dividing the frequencies, putting it where we want it to go in the PA. So and that makes the amplifiers work more efficiently. That's the reason we do that, correct? Very much so. If we were to send full range sound to the amplifier and that amplifier was powering a speaker that only did low frequency, well, we're sending a lot more power than we need to. So if we can focus the amplifiers to just carry the low frequency and the high frequency that they need, we're in. Yeah. Uh, it also has limiters and compressors in there, keep you from blowing up your sound system, uh, which is <laughs> infinitely important in today's world, especially if you're going from gig to gig without a lot of time for setup and sound check. Or having the guest artist that we sold a system once to uh, a club owner and he came back the next week and he had fried uh, the top end of the seven series horn mm -hmm. and I said well what happened and he said well I don't know and I said let me guess you had a guest artist come in and he said well yeah and they did this and he goes yeah yeah okay and I said you're buying a drive rack aren't you and he goes yes yeah <laughs> it's perfect it's it's easy it's an easy thought in my opinion because it takes everything that you need and we're talking about um, you know products that are starting at around 500 bucks yeah. So we're not talking about dramatically expensive products. We're talking about something that's affordable to the working musician, but it's an insurance policy. If for nothing else, you know that you can EQ and you've got a limiter so you won't blow your PA up. If nothing else, it's paid for itself there. Yeah. Now let's talk about some of the other features that we can actually get out of the system. Um, there's actually uh, anti-feedback circuits in here. So what'll happen is, uh, uh, I, I feel like I could spend a whole show just on anti-feedback as well. Well, we may do that in the future. <laughs> yeah, then what's, what's really cool is, is that you can actually, this has an automatic sensing circuit that if it sees a loop of the same, same signal, feedback is defined as loop gain at unity. So if there's a loop of gain, you shove a microphone into a speaker, you're gonna get feedback. And if that, if that feedback happens, there's, a, there's a, a whole separate algorithm in here that finds the feedback and surgically eliminates it. And what I mean by surgically is, um, most people are familiar with a graphic EQ that has 30 faders on it. And each of those faders will adjust one third of an octave of sound. Which can be a fairly big chunk. Yeah, it's a pretty good, pretty good amount of sound that you can cut out. What this anti-feedback circuit can do is take up to an 1 80th of an octave and wow. really just get that sound that's feeding back and eliminate it. So that's a really big feature on this product. Um, in addition to that, um, there is a um, auto tune feature. Um, in, a, in a future episode, we'll probably talk about this some more, but uh, you notice there's a microphone uh, plugged into the front of, that, uh, of this drive rack PA and that microphone simply goes out into your venue, you push a couple buttons 
and it will automatically EQ your room for an optimum setting that you determine. So that's really cool. You go into a venue that you've never done before, and before you're setting up, you plug the microphone in, hit a quick button, kind of sets itself. We did a show last Christmas up in San, uh, San Ramon, and the sound company they brought in uh, had the drive racks, and they had the Versatech uh, rig spread mm -hmm. out of the big quad, and he took about 15 minutes, moved the microphone from area to area, had his laptop set up, mm -hmm. hit go, went, oh, tweak, 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 move to the next array, tweak, tweak, tweak. He had the whole quad, and we're talking, you know, two football field size. Yeah. Done in 10 minutes. Yeah, and that's, that's where this technology, these modern PA systems will, will, will get us there. Um, uh, some other things in here, you can store programs, which is great. Let's say you're going to go back to that gig and you've stored that setting. Walk in the next time, recall the gig in San Ramon, you're good to go. Stores all your settings in there. Um, there's, uh, there's also a subharmonic synth on here, which I know is real popular for portable DJs, um, which helps uh, accentuate the low frequency. Not typically used in live sound, but for mobile DJs and, and... Just adds a little bit more bump to the music? It's exactly right. Yeah, it just kind of uh, fattens up that low frequency. And um, so... And then, safely, not to blow out your subwoofer. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> the, other, the other feature on there that's, that's really cool is there is a, a setup wizard. So let's say you buy the thing and you're not really sure what's going on, how to use it. It takes you through step by step and says, what are your speakers? Uh, since DBX is part of the Harman Pro group, uh, you can select your JBL speakers and your crown amps in there and it will automatically set up equalization, crossover, limiter, delay, all of those parameters so that you're, you know, you're 90% of the way there before you even plug your system in. And then That's after that saying. you can fine tune it. That's right. You're all, you can always go back in manually and adjust the, the EQ for the room or you can use the auto EQ at that point to set it up. And well, it sounds like, and in fact maybe we should do another show on just how all that works. I think we should. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> um, now that we've done all that, uh, we're going to leave the DBX processor. So just to review, we got all the mics going into the mixer. We got the mixer doing what it needs to do. Got some reverb in there as well. We're leaving the mixer, going into our loudspeaker processor. We've done all the processing for the loudspeakers. Now we go into an amplifier. Amplifier is one of the most dramatic changes in the industry, I think, in the last, uh, really in, in modern times, in the last six, eight years, we've really seen a change to lighter weight power amplifiers, thank goodness, yeah. uh, smaller amplifiers, uh, amplifiers that take less current to actually give us the output that we need. Um, this amplifier here that we're showing today is from Crown. Um, Crown is uh, obviously a staple in amplification. Uh, they've been around for uh, quite a while, making people sound good for many years. This is a, a flagship product from Crown. This is the Crown iTech series. This happens to be an IT4000. As a point of reference, this, this amplifier will put out uh, uh, 4,000 watts of power. It's two rack spaces. It's about 28 pounds. It'll draw about 10 to 12 amps from your circuit. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's absolutely feather light compared to its predecessor. To get that same amount of power was 75, 80 pounds. 30 amp current draw, you know, it, it was just a lot more of a beast. Now the other thing that's really cool is, is that the actual reproduction of the sound is so much more detailed in the new modern amplifiers. Well, I can remember again back in the day when I first started playing, to get even a tenth of that power, we had a rack that would be three feet off the ground and it would take two of us to lift. That's right. And it would cost three times of today's dollars That's what right. that amplifier costs. That's exactly correct. And what's amazing is, is that it's once again, we're going to run faster, jump higher. So um, that technology, that Crown actually has a patent on the technology that they use to do this. It's called Class I amplifier technology. A lot of people um, referred to Class A amps, Class B amps, AB amps. There was a whole bunch of nomenclature that people used for them. And Crown actually has a patent on Class I amplification, um, which uh, is, is a, a, a quite an in-depth circuit. Obviously, if they have a patent on it, it's pretty high tech. But what it does is it's constantly recirculating its own power. It has very little loss due to resistance or due to uh, the impedance from the speaker. So it's actually running itself, it, it's, it's recirculating its power instead of dissipating it as heat. Ah. Traditional amplifiers would get really hot when they would start working. No this kidding. will put out some heat, but it's nowhere near the 
frying eggs on the top of your amplifier like some of the that you used to do. To get, used to do. Well, to get 4,000 watts. That's, that's right. You know, that's a lot of heat. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other thing that these, uh, a lot of these modern amplifiers have is they've actually got a internal DSP circuit in there. You notice that this does have the display screen on there. Uh, through an interconnect to a, to a computer, uh, we can do some of the same features as the drive rack in the crown amplifier. Not all of them, but some of them. So we're, once again, we're just making things that much more compact. Uh, you know, it makes it a lot easier to go gig to gig yeah. and get the sound system up and running. So. And again, with the DSP in the, in the drive racks, and I've seen this happen at big venues where, they're, again, they'll go around the room and set up their microphone and they'll be tuning between the drive racks and the amplifiers, tuning for the particular uh, reflections in a particular venue. That's right, and that's something that I think gets overlooked in, in today's sound systems. People walk in, they put their speakers up, they plug their guitar in, they expect it to sound just like it did at the last gig or in their rehearsal space, and that's not the case. Each venue sounds different. If we were to bring a PA system into this room, it would sound different than if we were to turn it on upstairs in the pro audio room at, at Guitar Showcase. Or take so, it out to the parking lot, or take it down to the Shark Tank. That's right. All that's those exactly different rooms right. sound different. And what's cool is, is with the Drive Rack PA, it's got that auto EQ feature in there. So no matter what venue you go into, you plug that thing in, push a button, you know, and we're going. Yeah, so and speaking of going, we're just about out of time. We Excellent. didn't really get a chance to talk too much about JBL speakers. Well, J JBL's a, 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 a widely used or a widely accepted name. About nine out of ten concert tours on the road last year used JBL Professional, and you can check out the full line of what they have to offer down at Showcase. Guitar Showcase. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Jeff uh, McDonald from Harmon Pro for coming to speak with us about. Uh, Pro Audio and how to put a basic system together. Uh, I really appreciate the time. Uh, this is gear that I have personally owned and used. I've beat the heck out of my crown amps. And in <laughs> fact, I, the, the last pair I had, the rack ears were actually bent like this because I dropped the cases so much after 10 years. And they kept and they, working. Every time I turned them on. I used to call them the arc welders because they were so reliable you could take the speaker wires and, and do some minor welding with, with the voltage and the amps would just keep going. Yep, that was a demo that we used to do. We used to operate a drill with a crown amplifier and wow. we, we called it, we drill through the competition and that's how much, that's how reliable they are. Yeah, so, so very good and also I've been using JBL, so I actually have a pair of Eons in my truck as we speak. Yeah. Uh, which I use for my guitar. Perfect. So thank you very much. Thanks Jack.